What? It's time now for My Two Favorite Librarians. Brought to you by the Copper Tree Boutique in Dale's Grand Market, located in beautiful, historic downtown Amherst. Hi, this is My Two Favorite Librarians. I'm Denise Corey. I'm Chantel Taylor, and today we're talking about posthumously famous authors. Well, I was really going to say books published posthumously. I have a really hard time with that word, so it's going to be difficult for me this whole show. But some people were, it wasn't one book, it was their whole body of work that was famous after they died. I am going to talk about one of those people. Most of this is a sad topic. It is. Because, you know. It seems like a lot of, especially older, like older authors, historical authors, they all died at like 25 from like drinking too much and (laughs) like they ended up in the gutter consumption isn't it always consumption i guess so well let's talk about a recent author Ooh, stieg larson yes the girl with the dragon tattoo yeah he wrote the millennium trilogy and the whole trilogy was published after his death so he had submitted the books to a publisher and the publisher had agreed to publish them, but had not done so prior to his death. He died unexpectedly of a heart attack at the age of 50. Wow. Apparently, he was a heavy smoker. So the story about him... Okay, so first of all, I'm going to say, I did not like these books. I didn't even try. I don't want to read those books. I read the first book. I tried to read the second book. I did not like them. Lots of people love them and good oh, for they're them. Huge, yeah. They, I mean, really, that really spun off. I think a lot of that like domestic noir because people really like that dark, like sort of Scandinavian writing style that's yeah. very bleak. And well, his I think are kind of tacky, are they not? They're tacky, and there's like a lot about banking and stuff. But they are they still have some pretty dark violence in them like there's some pretty hardcore violence in these books um but yeah they're not and they're not really the genre i enjoy reading but if you enjoy reading them by all means i'd never say that people shouldn't read something but the story about him is actually more interesting i think than the story in those books because he was this journalist who mostly uncovered corrupt politicians and right-wing hate groups and he didn't marry his longtime partner because if you got married in Sweden they had to have your full address or something and he couldn't let that information be known because of the things that he covered as a journalist so after his death because he did not have a valid will all of his money went to his family from whom he was uh, estranged. estranged. Oh. And so his long-term partner actually wrote a book, too, called Things I Want You to Know About Stieg Larsson and Me. So I think that I would find that more interesting than the Millennium Trilogy. Which brings up another question. Yes. How do you feel about other authors picking up the work that was left behind and publishing new books in it. Well, let's talk about another posthumously famous author whose work had to be finished by another author, and that's Michelle McNamara, um, I'll Be Gone in the Dark. She died before her manuscript was finished, and journalist Billy Jensen had to fill in sort of the empty pieces based on her research and you can really tell what she wrote and what he wrote you can really tell and i don't generally read true crime but i did read that book and her style of writing feels very warm and sympathetic and not towards the killer but towards the victims and his style of writing seems very well he's probably used to being more detached because detached. as a journalist yeah. he's supposed to cover like the whole picture and she was obsessed with that case so yes, she was she obsessed, obsessed with true crime and this one really got to her and her book led to it helped them discover who the murderer was yeah, yeah. after her yes, death she had passed away her yes. unexpected death yeah. yeah so i think if people can separate the two But then on the other hand, like, 
if he had been alive, would he have written a fourth book? Because obviously he meant for it to be a trilogy, and now no. they're just... No, actually, Stieg Larsson apparently meant for it to be a 10-book series. Ooh, okay. And he had notes that he left behind. So now there are three books that have come out since the original trilogy, and they've been written by David Lagerkrantz. So they're written based on his notes and outlines... But it's still but not it's gonna not be writing. Him. I think if you enjoy the series, maybe you won't Or like V C Andrews. Yeah. V C Andrews died in nineteen eighty six. Initially her uh, estate had put out books that they said that she, you know, just needed a little polishing and editing. And then they put out books that they said were based on notes like or- notes. And then they just started to put out books. So they're just putting out books under her name, but she's been dead for 30 years. Like, I don't know if that's... Well, again, if people are enjoying them... Yeah, I mean, people still read them. Yeah. Yeah. Something sadder. Anne Frank. Anne Frank. And Irene Nemirovsky. She wrote Sweet Francaise. Yes. And that was written during World War II... And she did later die in a concentration camp, just as as did Anne Frank. So these are people who, you know, may have gone on to do great and wonderful things whose life was cut short by a terrible war and atrocity. Mm. Do you have something to lighten the mood now? Yeah, let's talk about one of my hated books of all times. Okay. A Confederacy of Dunces. I've never read that. By John Kennedy tool so a former boss of mine i've talked about this a former boss of mine loved 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 this book and so i thought oh i'm gonna read it for my like summer classic i did not get very far i don't know if i got 20 pages into it and he was such a jerk the main character in this book oh i hated this book (laughs) i have never read it he also had very inappropriate feelings for his dog And I was like, no, we're done here. We are done. Yeah, maybe I won't pick that one up. So A Confederacy of Dunces was published, I think, 11 years after he committed suicide. And he was given a Pulitzer for this piece of yuck. (laughs) So the only book I've read by Michael Crichton is Pirate Latitudes. Were all of Michael Crichton's books published posthumously? No, three. Three of his books were published posthumously. So he wrote for a very long time, plus did a lot of TV stuff, writing and producing and blah, blah, blah. Um, But after his death, they published three more books, Pirate Latitudes, Micro, and Dragon Teeth. So the only one that I've read by him was Pirate Latitudes, and it was not a great book. But now, if you went back and read, like, Jurassic Park... And I'm wondering if these books weren't published because he didn't like them or he felt they needed work or if he you know and they just after his death publish things publish things because they know that they'll make money because his name you know obviously and I haven't read Jurassic Park I've only seen the movies yes so I don't know he did a lot of like medical thrillers which I cannot read this year yeah I don't want to read anything medical Well, on the same kind of sort of vein, what about Philip K. Dick? I did read Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Because he died a few months before Blade Runner came out. Okay. And so he never, apparently he barely made a living while he was alive with his science fiction. And then, of course, once Blade Runner came out, he exploded. But he was already past. Yes. Yes, because Blade Runner is based on Do yes. Androids Dream of Electric Sheep. It's not a really... Uh, faithful adaptation? Faithful adaptation, yeah. The ideas are there. But, of course, Philip K. Dick wrote that in the 70s, I want to say. Because Blade Runner was made in the 80s. Yeah. Maybe even in the 60s he wrote it. So it's got a very distinct... you know. It, There's a lot of smoking in that book. There's a lot of smoking in that book. I don't know. You really notice things like that now because 
Nobody it, does it anymore. You yeah. you rarely see people smoking in your office or Yeah, and especially like if you're watching contemporary TV, there's no like smoking. There's not a lot of Mad Men. Yes. And there's not a lot of smoking in like movies or anything anymore. So when I'm reading a book and it's talking about how much people are smoking, it just it sticks in my brain. I don't know why. Cuz I'm a weirdo. Cuz you want to start smoking again. I'm not going to do that. Lies. <laughs> what about Herman Melville? Do you know he was only paid five hundred dollars for Moby Dick, and during his lifetime, only made ten thousand dollars writing? Have you ever read Moby Dick? Good. No, I almost <laughs> swore there. <laughs> I haven't even pretended to try to no. read Moby Dick. And it was thirty years after his death that finally the sort of Moby Dick renaissance began in 1921 they started it's interesting to see because the same thing kind of happened to Jane Austen she was like not famous but she was like okay in her lifetime but of course everything she published was anonymous so people didn't really know and then it was like in 1911 that someone wrote an essay about like why you should be paying attention to these books by Jane Austen and then boom And half of her works were published posthumously. Yes. Because she only put out six. No, wasn't it just Persuasion? No, that was was published. And of course, I didn't write that in my notes. I looked it up. Sylvia Plath was another one. Sylvia Plath's major work was published while she was alive. No, The Bell Jar was published. No, you're right. She killed herself just after it was published. There was a book of poems published after. Yes, which won the Pulitzer? So apparently that's how you win that. Maybe. I'm not planning to test that theory. So many. Kafka, Edgar Allan Poe, Kierkegaard. That's like a list of things I'm not going to read. I read one Kafka when I was in university. It's weird. A book that you have read, the Guernsey Literary Society and Potato Peel, whatever that's called. (laughs) Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. Yes, the woman who wrote... Marianne Schaefer. Yeah, she wrote most of it, is my understanding. And then she had not finished the manuscript, and she knew she was ill. And she asked her niece to help her complete this book. And it did get published after her death. And then her niece, whose name I can't remember... I didn't write it down, I just wrote her name down. uh, Has gone on to write... Other books. Other books, yeah. Yeah. So there's actually quite a few authors who either died and then their famous work was published or all of their work sort of became famous after, after their death. Like paint, uh, like painters. Yes, yeah. You know, Van Gogh made next to no money off of his art while he was still alive, but after his death became hugely famous. What are you reading right now? So I am participating in a Bridgerton read-along leading up to the release of the the TV. Yes, the Bridgerton series on Netflix, which starts on Christmas Day. Oh. Which I won't be able to watch on Christmas Day because, of course, Christmas dinner is at my house. Oh, Well, not my house, at my mom's mom's house, house, so I'll be helping. So I'm going to try and read, because I read The Duke and I, which is the first book in the series, Julia Quinn. She wrote the Bridgerton series. So I read the first book a while ago, The Duke and I, but I'm starting over again. And I'm going to try to get to Colin's book because it's the Bridgertons obviously are a family. So there's like eight kids, I think. And it was really the Duke and I was pretty good. And the sibling relationship is amazing. So, so you're nice. looking forward to watching this series? And I then, am. And you want to get these books read so you can judge what they've left out? Yes, because, <laughs> of course, people who have read the books already have, like, done these, like, breakdowns of the trailer, like, scene by scene, and, oh, this person, and this person was engaged to so-and-so, and then they broke up, and they got with their heroine, and people are all ready to revolt, because what if they don't, like, if they don't get the heroes and heroines that are in the books? Shonda Rhimes might not have a. oh yeah of course it's Shonda Rhimes yes yeah so it's going to be good and it's going to be well financed show oh it looks beautiful not going to be done on the cheap are amazing 
I am reading Palaces for the People, How Social Infrastructure Can Help Fight Inequality, Polarization, and the Decline of Civic Life. This is an Adam recommendation. By Eric Kleinenberg. I'm actually not reading it because Adam recommended it, although it does sound like an Adam recommendation. There was a conference I went to last fall where one of the speakers mentioned this book and I put it on my list to read. And I picked it up this summer and then realized this is not a summer book. It is not a fun beach read. It is not fluffy. It's a very serious academic look at how communities need this social infrastructure to, you know, keep us together. So I couldn't read that in the summer. (laughs) I needed it to cool down. This needs to be like curled up on my couch reading and able to take a note if I want to, not sitting on the beach tanning. Happening at the library. And of course, everything has changed this year because we have COVID restrictions in place. We are recording this show in advance, so who knows what has happened if we are open or closed, so always check ahead. But we do have a lot of things available online. So if you go on to the library's Facebook page, it's under Cumberland Public Libraries, you will find story times and instructions for crafts and Chantelle and I arguing about books and all kinds of things. And we have all kinds of stuff on our website that you can download and borrow. And our website is www.cumberlandpubliclibraries.ca. I would also like to put in a plug, um, especially as we're going into higher numbers of COVID, in Nova Scotia. You can sign up to receive our newsletter, which is a great way if we're going to be changing our hours or closing branches that people can be notified quickly. But of course, COVID things will of course have on the website and on Facebook, but newsletter goes out monthly. So sign up to get it. And it's a good idea to call ahead before you go to a branch. Oh, definitely. Even without COVID, we are coming into flu season. People do need to take some time off. You know, we may have to close because of that. So call ahead just in case. And we'll also send you books by mail if you want to do that. Absolutely free service for anybody in Cumberland County. What are we talking about next week? I have no idea. Can you read my note? Oh, murder (laughs) yay we always do murder in december i know that murder makes you happy (laughs) (laughs) so yes next week we're going to talk about murdery books and it's mostly going to be chantelle talking about like her crazy true crime that i cannot handle it's delightful talk to you next week bye my two favorite librarians Brought to you by the Copper Tree Boutique in Dale's Grand Market, located in beautiful, historic downtown Amherst.